recording. All right, welcome back to the study hall. September 10th, we're going to catch up on what we were doing before. Um, another episode of critical reasoning problems in which you can narrow the possibilities before reading the passage. So if you remember what this was all about from last time, if you were here last time, you probably remember. If not, the, the basic deal is that in a lot of critical reasoning problems, just by reading the, the conclusion of the argument, you can have a very specific, very narrow sense of what is relevant. Um, if you have uh, someone with the hand raised, if you have questions, go ahead and type them in the chat box. But we'll, we'll see this as we go. And what I'm going to do is sort of artificially restrict the amount of text that's visible on the screen. Just school you in this way of thinking. But before we do that, here's the copyright notice. These problems are from the free GMAT prep software. They are copyright GMAC. And um, by the way, when you submit GMAT prep problems for the study hall or for the forum, they need to be from the free software. Free software, not paid stuff. If it ends with pack, we can't use it. Can't use the exam packs, can't use the question packs, because those are paid material. But we can use the free GMAT prep, and that's a wonderful source of stuff, in fact. Almost all the Thursdays with me are based on problems from the free GMAT prep. Okay, so let's take a look at a small fraction of a problem. Here you go. Okay. Now, let me show you, let me tell you what you have here and what you don't have here. Okay, what you obviously don't have here is a full problem. This is not an entire problem. You know that because there's missing things. What you do have is the prompt. Remember, the prompt is the thing that you always want to read first in critical reasoning. So you have that, which, you know, the task it actually tells you what you're supposed to do. This should always be the thing that you read first. Okay, but then other than that, all I've given you is the conclusion, the argument, just that. I haven't even given you the rest of it. So in other words, what we're experimenting with here, and we did do this last time as well. Well, what I want you to do, and we're going to use the chat box for this, what you should do here is note, note the task that you're being asked to do. And in this case, you have to weaken an argument. And then examine the conclusion. And then try to narrow down what's relevant here. And then if you have an idea of that, like what are some, as specifically as possible, what are some ways in which you might weaken this argument. And then go ahead and put those in the chat box. And see what kind of ideas come out of this. As specifically as possible, what are some ways in which you might weaken this argument? Give you a bit of time to do that. Notice as you are typing, notice there are some words here that are more specific than usual. And you should pay attention to that. Because that right there is, is more specific than just saying weekend. or way against, or something like half doubt. Think about that for a sec. All right, people are starting to type ideas here, which is where it gets to be interesting. 
still got about four or five people with text in the chat box. So let's see what people are typing. It is. All right. In the meantime, let's go ahead and start putting some of these on the board. If you're still typing, you might have to try to multitask here and try to follow what we're saying while you're still typing the end of like the typing. But there's only a couple of people still typing now. So I think we have passed that sort of equilibrium here. In any case, here, so first let's address things like this. Um, other alternatives that cost less than $12,500. Well, so does anybody see what the issue is with this, with this thing that I just put up there? What's the matter with that? Yeah, no, that's the wrong way, right? That's actually going to make this argument an even better argument than it is. Because what we're saying, like, basically what this conclusion says is, I mean, it, it's not going to be a non sequitur argument. Like, it's not going to have things that don't follow from other things. So even though you haven't seen the original sentences yet, you know that this is a purely cost-based argument. Like this is this is going to be a financial, it's a balance sheet is what we're doing here. This is going to be a purely financial um, argument. What do you mean by this? I don't, maybe you can elaborate on that. So what they're saying here basically is $12,500 is too much. So we shouldn't do it. That's basically what they're saying. Now, um, first let's address this gray box that's on the screen here, and then we'll go into some more specifics. So this goes the wrong way. This actually strengthens the argument. Because remember what you're trying to do is you're trying to say you, we, we should not do whatever program it is that we're talking about. So if there are other programs that are cheaper than this, whatever the program is, th this, this means that this is even less justified than otherwise. You know. Because remember, if there are other alternatives, that this is an argument in favor of using the alternatives, right? So argument goes in favor of these alternatives. Alternatives is different vendors. Okay, if you, if you could reduce the cost of the treatment program, although, all right, sure. Now let's talk about how the GMAT does things. Let's talk about that. So assuming you mean that it's like the same program we're talking about up there, but we're going to reduce the cost. So what if we reduce the cost? Now, let's talk about the GMAT. One thing about things that strengthen and weaken arguments on this test is that they don't directly go against statements that have been made. So in other words, if the, if the argument says the program is going to cost $12,500, then one thing we know is that the program is going to cost $12,500. In other words, You'll, you'll know this if you've done more than a handful of problems from this test. But when they weaken and strengthen arguments, they come at the argument from an angle that has not yet been treated. So if you theoretically had something that said we can get the cost to go down, then that would probably work. But that's not how this test works. Right? Because the cost has been stated as a fact. So you're not wrong about this. It's just not how this test works. Because the cost of twelve thousand five hundred has already been stated, and uh, one thing about the GMAT is the GMAT does not it doesn't do it. The GMAT does not weaken arguments by saying not X 
if the argument says X, whatever X might be. It, it just it is not how it works. In real life, that's actually a thing that happens a lot. I mean, one way to argue against people is to say, no, you're wrong about whatever thing that you just said. That's a lie. It's not true. But they don't do that here. Okay. So, yeah. Now, now let's talk about this. Let's talk about a bunch of people typed some equivalent of this. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you where the multiple choice answers are located. I'm going to give you green checks and red X's for a second. Um, if this is your first time to this, if this is your first time using this program, that's where they are. Underneath your name, you're going to see a check mark thingy. What I want to do is let's get a vote here. Give me a green check if you think you could weaken the argument this way. Give me a red X if you think that is a big pile of notes. What do you think? By bringing in non-cost factors, do you think you could weaken the argument that way? Shouldn't be the kind of thing that you need to take too long to think about. I mean, you've been thinking about this problem for a while. So almost the exact even split. Wow. Yeah, we got like we got almost half and half. Although most people are still not voting. Okay. All right, well let's move on here. Of the people who have voted, we have eight green checks and we have eight X marks. So that is pretty much exactly even. You know what? No, nope, can't do it. At least not the way this problem is written. Not the way they wrote this problem. Nope. Now let's talk about what I wrote in green upstairs because that is a thing. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about what that means. This. This stuff. See, because, okay. When they give you prompts that have lots of words in them, they're giving you the lots of words for a reason. I mean, if this just meant weaken, they would just say weaken. Because one thing that they, I mean, one, one misconception that a lot of people have about this test is that they're trying to be tricky with words. If you've watched more than a handful of my sessions, you, you have heard me give this whole thing, this whole spiel over and over and over again. But no, they're not tricky. I mean, they really try to write these problems efficiently and with as few words as possible or at least darn close to that. And I mean, they still wind up looking wordy sometimes only because to be precise, you usually have to be pretty wordy. But if they take the word weaken out and put this in, they're doing it for a reason. Can anybody tell me what the reason is? Like, what's the difference between way against an argument or cast out on it or whatever and actually undermine the conclusion of it? What's the difference? I mean, you can also, the, the word conclusion is not the linchpin here. Like, if you take out the word conclusion and put the word logic where that word is currently sitting, you have the same kind of thing. Um, let's talk about, let's, let's erase some of the graffiti on the screen here. And let's talk about this. Let's talk about other factors. Like, let's say that, so it's a treatment program. I will tell you at this point it's a medical treatment program that they're talking about. So, like, other factors. I mean, let's say that, let's say you, let's say you found another non-financial factor that heavily favors the program. Let's say you found one. So here's the deal. I mean, would this way again? what the person is saying, that, that person up there who's talking and giving you that argument. Yeah, sure it would. But that's that. Does, does it actually undermine the logic 
of what that person is saying. No, it doesn't. Because the thing is, like, if you're bringing in non-financial considerations, that means that this argument is every bit as logical as it was. I mean, you you might have some other reasons to argue against it, but it, it you're not arguing against their logic. Whereas if you bring in other financial considerations, then you are. So this is a difference. Like, if you actually have to undermine the logic or the conclusion or anything like that of the argument, like if you actually have to undermine the way the argument works, this means that you have to bring in something that is in the same you know, the same type of thoughts that the person is talking about. So if the person is talking about financial stuff, then you need to bring in more financial stuff. Whereas if it was just way against this blah, 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 then maybe not. So in order to do this, you have to give a financial counter-argument. You have to do it. Because it's not good enough to just be on the other side. You actually have to show that this person's argument does not work. Smiley face, if that makes sense. And if you see why they are using the extra word in the, the question prompt here. Okay, so in other words, your counter argument has to also be a balance sheet item. It has to be financial. So now here is the question in all its full glory. Again, make sure you know where the multiple choice answers are found. Uh, they are underneath your name where you had those green checks and red X's before. There they are. Um, please do not indicate your multiple choice answer in the chat box. But give it a shot. Okay, you should pick something pretty soon. Um, there are a fair number of words in the choices that have been taking you some time to get through them. And it's understandable, but remember we have an awfully narrow band of possibilities here. I mean, you know there has to be some sort of financial counter argument. So it's got to be something. So if you haven't picked anything yet, let's pick something. I'll wait about 15, 20 more seconds. Okay, um, here's what you guys pick. I don't normally show the whole class profile on here, but, but it's sort of interesting. Um, these, these, these three, I guess there's four of them now, these B and D are actually, those were not there at all until the last, like, 10 seconds or something. So I think those might just be guesses. But notice that there are a lot of people picking C and there are a lot of people picking E. Um, and remember what we talked about in the last slide. I mean, just from reading what you have to do and reading how they hem in the argument. I mean, this is a cost-only argument. So this means you have to give some sort of balance sheet item. So anything that is not a cost-related item is just, it's not a thing. And it's, it's actually even, even more narrow than a lot of these things. Because if you're talking about a business operation, you might have revenues and also costs. But this is just cost. And there's no revenue for, you know, falling down and getting injured. So it's really just straight up cost versus other costs. So it's got to be cost items. Cost items are the only things that are relevant. Everything else is irrelevant. So, this, uh, no one picked A, so you guys know that's not a thing. Um, this is not a cost item. Nope, it's not. Neither is this. And I mean, also the frequency of the frequency of falls doesn't really do anything here anyway, because these numbers are both per incident. Like for each fall, it's eleven thousand dollars in the emergency room, and it's twelve thousand five hundred dollars in this program. That's per fall, so it doesn't matter how often or how not often people fall, because you can still compare the numbers. So we've got C and E. Um, 
Yeah, so one of these goes the right way, and one of them goes the opposite of the right way. And this is why you should personalize the argument. Make sure that, I mean, if you can actually picture having a sort of spirited dispute with someone about this, then you will do much better on these problems. But make sure that you personalize it. Like, you need to argue against this other person. Okay, this, this, this person up here. Let's give him a name. Her, him. Let's say that he is named Matt. I think we all know someone whose name is Matt. You need to say that Matt is wrong. You need to be like, Matt, you're stupid. But which, what, what side is Matt on? Does Matt like the new program, or does he not like the new program? He does not like it. Matt doesn't like the new program. He's a hater. So what you can do here, I mean, you can make this very personal very quickly by just making it your program. I mean, if this program is your baby, then it's going to be a lot easier to imagine defending it against this sort of argument. So this is your program. You want to support it. I mean, you want to show that it is more cost effective, not less. So I'm looking at all you guys who picked E right now, because look at what E does. I mean, your program is the new one. Let me make sure that you keep these things straight. If you imagine having an argument with a dude named Matt, you will definitely keep these things straight. Because no, nobody forgets which side of a dispute they're on. But it doesn't happen. So your program is this program. So a big part of that is I mean, notice that's already rolled into this cost, but notice what they're saying about it. They're saying that this is going to increase even more rapidly than other stuff. So your program, which is already worse in the cost department, this definitely doesn't help you. And it seems to suggest that yours is going to like spiral upward in price even faster than the alternative. So this is bad for you. It's definitely not good for you. It's either neutral or bad, considering that, that these are rolled into your cost. And it's going to get higher. So it does not help you. This is not on your side. On the other hand, C, frequent result of injury is long-term pain, blah, 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 blah. Not counted among, aha, look, this is bad. Not counted among his considerations. He is on the emergency room side of things. This means that Matt is forgetting to take into account these costs. These costs are not included in the $11,000 figure. So there you go. That's supposed to say 11 k not 11 x Fair. I can type, I swear. Um, this is the only, you knew ahead of time, right? There's got to be something like that. It has to shift the cost argument against that in favor of you. So C is the choice that we want. Any questions about this problem? In particular, note how much that you, how much you have by just reading the task and the conclusion. I mean, this is not always this much of a gold mine, but in a lot of cases it will be. Because you know, if the same thing, if you hear people arguing in real life, if you hear someone make the point, I mean, then just that one sentence alone is going to narrow the whole conversation down a lot. Okay, let's do another one. Should I do another one? Let's talk about this one. So here's what I want you to do. You don't have the answer choices. But again, read the task. Then read the proposal, which is the sentence I gave you. And then what is or are the only type or types of things? that 
said. See, I could do what you want. There's not going to be very many. It's like in the last problem, you had to have something financial. It's going to be something like this. chat box once you have some ideas. Those are the only kinds of things that could do what you want. How of you guys are being sort of vague? Like when you say monitoring catfish behavior, you got to tell me more than that. I mean, that is what they're doing. Um, same thing with something about catfish. What is the what? What kind of something? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's talk about a couple of these. So something like this, this is, this, is not, this is not a thing here. I mean, we are being purely pragmatic about this. Like, we want to know how to predict the earthquakes. I mean, the thing is, you, you don't have to know why things happen if to correlate them to each other. You know, I mean, think about, think about all those sayings that sailors had about weather for centuries and centuries and centuries, you know, about like red skies in the morning, sailors take warning, red skies at night, sailors delight. Things like that. I mean, they had no idea what was going on there at all. I mean, as far as sailors were concerned, you know, wind and ocean storms and stuff were the god Poseidon getting pissed off at you. But it doesn't matter. Like, they knew how to predict it. And if it's pure voodoo magic, it makes no difference at all. So this is not a thing. This, is, this, this would not be relevant. I mean, if they swim that way because they are divinely inspired, that is totally fine. If they swim that way because something inside them is affected by tremors, that's, that's also fine. We don't care. So it doesn't matter. could be voodoo. could be science. I don't know. As long as the correlation works, we don't care why it works. Because at the end of the day, all that matters is whether we can predict earthquakes or not. Okay. Now, um, let's see. So remember, as far as this one goes, this falls under the same warning of this is not how the GMAT works. Because, again, if we use our letter abbreviation, this is X. And this is like, well, maybe not X is what you're saying here. I mean, in the real world, that would be a consideration to raise. Like, if your proposal is to go do X thing, you know, then, yeah, we definitely need a feasibility study. On the other hand, this is not how this test works. Remember, the test will not weaken X by, by raising the issue of not. That's one thing that you definitely know they will not do. So you can you can rest assured of that. So um, well, maybe not X the GMAT. So you ha this would be valid. This this is valid logic on your part, but the test doesn't work that way. Okay. All right. Let's see what else people are saying. Um, radically and dangerous. Well. Yeah, dangerous earthquakes. I mean, earthquakes are kind of dangerous, right? So, um, although it's true that you, there could be something here. You know, this is like all earthquakes, and this is like just the dangerous one. Uh, you might want to think about that. 
like what if they swim erratically before? Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't know if you guys know this if you don't live in earthquake country, but I mean, in here in Tokyo and also in LA and stuff, there's like little bitty earthquakes every single day. So that's that. Aha! Now we're talking. Ah, uh, we're talking. Let's throw these up there. Here are three very nice phrasings. Let's put them up there. There's one. There's another one. Same idea three times. I like all three, so I'm just going to put them up there. Because, I mean, again, they're, they're not going to go the not X route. Okay, so they do swim radically before earthquakes. This is a thing. It happens. I mean, that's, gonna, that's a fact, so you're not going to dispute that. And then also, if the proposal is to monitor catfish, then we know that monitoring catfish is a thing that we can do because they're not going to propose X if X is not possible. But, 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 this is, this is, you know, this is only one situation where they do this. Like, um, one, it's also, it's up there in the chat box now, but someone gave a specific example of, like, what if it's cold? Yeah, I mean, something like that. Yeah. Because this is just one thing that, that makes them get all weird. Uh -huh. But what if the same thing results? How about their thing? Because you know, because you know this is a thing. They do, there is definitely a correlation between erratic swimming and earthquake. But, 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 the deal is what if some other factor? So this correlation exists. You can't argue against it because fact is fact is fact. So this correlation does exist. It does the thing. But what about other spurious correlations with the same behavior? Aha. There you go. Because that's the only way you can really break this. I mean, there's definitely a correlation. So the only way to make this lose its predictive value is if they swim erratically at all sorts of other times as well. It could be earthquakes of insignificant magnitude, or it could be other things altogether. So but that's, that's the only way that this would have a compromised value as a plan. So here are your answer choices. You know what you're looking for, so look for it. Give it a shot. All right, let's try to pick an answer pretty soon. Um, Almost everybody who's answered so far has it, but I'm I'm actually more concerned with the last few people because those are usually the people who are benefiting most from this discussion or who can stand to benefit from it the most. So if you don't have an answer, you should, you should pay more. You do have to know that the word tremor means the same thing as the ground shaking. It's like tremor is earthquake, basically. You have to know that. Um, okay. So remember what we came up with. I mean, there has to be some other correlation that 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 obscures the correlation between erratic swimming and like big dangerous earthquakes. So it could be other not so dangerous earthquakes, or it, it could be random factors. So, but it has to be something. It has to be some other thing makes catfish swim in a way that's weird. So, some other thing besides big quakes makes catfish swim in a way that's weird. All right, so that means it is not A, and it's not B, and it's not D, because none of those have anything to do with correlations in catfish. But if you look at C and E, those both look like something makes fish swim erratically. In fact, you've got that. So 
Okay. So, what's the deal with C? Does C give you an alternate thing that could cause them to swim weird? So it doesn't. It doesn't say that. Although, notice that this doesn't say that either. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't really strengthen it. Yeah, there you go. It, it's what Ling Shi. Pardon me if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. It's what Ling Shi Li has said here. Um, this is this is just an explanation of why. But you know, like as we said, we don't we don't really care about why. I mean, it, it could be divine inspiration for all we really care. Like C provides us with the science behind why catfish swim radically before earthquakes. But you know what? We don't care. This just doesn't it doesn't it doesn't support the argument at all. Because the argument just depends on the fact that there is a correlation. And the argument is totally not affected by why. As long as the correlation is real, we just don't care. So, I mean, we only care that the correlation exists, not why. As we mentioned on the previous page, the mechanism is irrelevant. I mean, even if the mechanism is completely unknown to us, it doesn't matter. It's empirical. It's just, hey, man, those guys are swimming weird. On the other hand, E. So. E says that even little bitty teeny tiny tiny earthquakes will still cause them to swim weird. And so that destroys the correlation with dangerous big earthquakes. Because then you just don't know. You're, you're, you know that there's a correlation with some kind of quake. But not those anymore. So now you just are, now you're correlated with any quake, even slight fleeting ones which means you can't predict dangerous ones anymore. So this is the one we want. The other thing also, this is something I basically say every single time we do critical reasoning in these study halls at all, is when you review the problems, make sure that it is white, 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 black, meaning there should always be four completely wrong answers and one answer that is correct. So if you have to undermine a proposal, what you will not see is answer choices that undermine it, but not as much as the correct answer. That, that's the thing that does not happen. Like, the wrong answers will either be things that are irrelevant or things actually go the other way. In this case, we got four irrelevant things and then the correct answer. In the last problem, we had three irrelevant things, a wrong way answer, and a correct answer. And that's a very good indicator of whether your review has been thorough enough. I mean, it, it needs to be absolutely white, 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 and black. And if it seems like there's any gray in the wrong answer choices, that you got some more reviewing to do. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's do another one. Well, I mean, in quant, I mean, in quant, of course, the wrong. I mean, no, no one's even going to have an issue there, right? Like in quant, you know, the wrong answers are things that are wrong. It, it's math. I mean, if the answer to a question is fourteen, then it's not twelve. If something is sufficient, then it's not not sufficient. I mean, those are if you just think about that for a sec, you'll realize. But, you know, because this is the verbal section, a lot of people are of this school of thought that, oh, there's going to be these little subtle differences or nitpicks or, like, there's going to be competing weakeners and i got to pick the one that weakens it more. No, nope, none of those are things. It's going to be white, 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 black. Because, I mean, it has to. It's a standardized test. I mean, there's, they can't really have hazy answers and hazy reasoning because, when, I mean, this is a very high stakes standardized exam. It can't be surrounded by controversy like that. So, okay. Just be aware. Review. Review needs to happen until it gets to that point. Let's try another one. And, all right, how about this one? This will be the last one where I give you the, the 
whited out version of it. The one I give you after this, I'm going to give you the whole thing at once. But the theme is still try to predict as much as you can, try to narrow this down. So you know the drill. Here's the task. Chat box time. How would you do this? Okay, a couple of people are typing this. Um, so make sure you know what that is. I mean, this is not what an answer choice is going to look like. Um, what this is, this is, let's say it's Matt again. I mean, Matt is saying that exports are going to go down, at least of these particular types of goods that we're talking about. So this is this is ultimately his point. Matt's point is that exports of these things will go down. So yeah, this is the side of the argument. You you want something that's on this side of the issue. But just make sure that you guys know that the correct answer is not going to say this. I mean, the correct answer is going to be a reason to make you think this, but it's not going to directly say that. So smiley face, if that makes sense, if you guys are all crystal clear on that. Like, this is your side of the issue, but it's not what, what the weakener is going to say. Because it's, it's more of the X and not X thing again, right? Matt says X. You're not going to weaken it by saying actually not X. So it's going to be, this is going to be suggested by something, but it's going to be, no, nah, no, nah, they're just not going to come out and say that. So. Okay. So let's start putting these up there and talking about them. Is this the right side of the argument? Someone says perhaps they're going to go down for some other reason. So remember, there's you and there's Matt. I mean, if you if you gave me this, it means you don't have a you and a Matt in your head. You really got to have that. I mean, there, there's the argument is, will exports go up or go down? So if you have this, you're still saying they're going to go down. So this is still on Matt's side. That's not what you want. I mean, you want to show that his whole thing is bunk and that he's wrong about this. So it's good. in fact, there's other things diminishing that helps him. So, okay. All right. So let's it's going to have to be a new piece of information. That's true. So let's, let's pull a couple of these. And this. Okay, I like these three. There's one. Oh, that, didn't, that didn't work here. I like these two. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, okay. So you know they're going to present you with some sort of evidence that exports of something are going to go down. And also, 
Um, let me pull up one more. Because there, there are actually, there's not a lot of patterns in critical reasoning. But this is one pattern that really is an actual pattern, is they, they look at one aspect of something, and then they make a conclusion about, whoa, the entire market, right? So yeah, this is something they do a lot. So you can anticipate. You know, Matt probably isn't thinking about the entire export market. So, and then you can read what Matt says with this already in your head. Um, let me give you a um, let me give you an OG reference for the same type of thing. Um, if I by telling you that it's this kind of problem, and I'm sort of giving away what how the argument works, but. This is check out when you have a moment. Don't do it right now. But if you have OG 13, their 2015 edition, critical reasoning number 72, it's the same sort of thing. It's like the speaker is only considering one part of some vast market with lots of aspects. Something has lots of aspects. And speaker is only considering one of them. So that is the thing. I mean, same thing actually with that cost argument about um, where was it? This thing is right here. Same sort of thing. I mean, you had it, this time it wasn't one specific thing, but it was the same sort of deal with Matt is not thinking about all of the costs. It's just the emergency treatment, okay, but what about things that follow there from? There. Same sort of thing with this. All right. Because whatever Matt's saying is probably stuff. I mean, whatever exports Matt is thinking about probably will go down. But then you need to be thinking about other exports. So, yeah, this is what you should anticipate. There's going to be some other sort of exports. By the way, when uh, when you wrote import, Amy, I think you mean export, right? Let's assume that you mean export there, because um, that's the logic, right? So, anticipate some other source of exports will increase in magnitude. About that. Your answer choices. Okay, most of you guys. I mean, the other thing is this: when you go through the answer choices, when you have a prediction, you should look for it. That probably doesn't sound like genius. But what I mean is, you should not let the answer choices erase what is in your head and put you on a whole new path, which people do. They're like, whoa, I totally forgot about this prediction that I made. Because some of you guys are picking choices that have absolutely nothing to do with the exports. And that, that especially if you have this, this is what's going to happen. Because, I mean, the deal is the worst case scenario here, if you personalize the argument and you know what it says and you understand what the issues are, the worst case scenario would be that you predict something that isn't in the choices. Because in a lot of cases, there are multiple ways to weaken your strength and stuff. But that's basically the worst case. I mean, you're not going to predict something that's one of the wrong answers unless you fundamentally misunderstand the argument. So, in other words, here we have this. We have a prediction. 
Like, we have predictions, the thing. So we should hang on to it. In, in other words, the arrow should go in this direction. It should not go the other direction. You should not read a choice and then go back to this and think about whether or uh, not you have this in mind already. This is a criterion, and you have it in your head, and you want to see whether the choices measure up against it. That's the whole point of this. The whole point of this is that you should evaluate the choices. This is a standard. This is a standard by which to judge the answer choices. And it, the other thing that's going to do is it's going to make this a lot faster. It's going to be way more efficient. Because when you go through, you can just barrel through these things. And if there's no connection to other sources of exports, you can ignore that answer because it's, it's not going to argue against the math. So as opposed to having to go through all of these. And I mean, yeah, assuming it's prediction is correct. But again, as we said, worst case scenario would be that you predict something that's not there. And then if it's not there, then you can think about what, how the choices work and how they affect it. But in a lot of these cases, there's really only going to be one way to do this. I mean, it's not every single time, but these, these, are, these are pretty precise arguments in a lot of cases, lots and lots of them, actually, because cause they have to. I mean, that's how they make the problems. That's, that's how they make them so that there are distinctly wrong and right answers. They have made the argument in a lot of ways. But try it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's the same advice that applies to just about everything, which is just throw it at the wall and see if it sticks. Just see if it works for you. If it works for you, do it. If it doesn't work for you, don't do it. But at least try it first. I mean, and give it some time, because if it's out of your comfort zone to do this, then it will take longer at first. Like, if you're not used to formulating these thoughts as you read this, then there's going to be some getting used to it. So don't try it, like, two or three times and then reject it. Like, try it for long enough to at least feel it out. But yeah, other source of exports. So look at what we got here with choice A. New, new stuff. I, I mean, I don't even care what kind of new stuff it is. It's new equipment for which strong worldwide demand. And this is new stuff, so your country is the one that's producing it first because they developed it. This is new exports. Oh, yeah. That's what we want. There you go. Still take a whiz through the other choices here just real quickly. Um, this is fine for non-compliance. That has nothing to do with how much stuff we are exporting. Savings, this is still, it's not a cost argument. It's just an export argument. And this does not affect the import-export sheet. This is also this has nothing to do with exporting stuff. And neither is that. None of these have anything to do with exporting stuff. So we've got black, white, 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 white. More exports, nothing to do with 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 exports. How about that? But then if you do spend time formulating this kind of stuff, which is the complaint that a lot of people are going to have, I think that's going to take so long. However much time you spend doing that, you will definitely make it up many fold when you get to the choices, because you will be able to go through the choices much more quickly. Okay. Um, let's see. So, how so? I mean, remember that it's not like your country's overall trade deficit that we're talking about. It's not, it's not exports minus other costs, and it's not exports minus imports. It is just annual exports of manufactured goods. So you, know, you don't even have to think about which way this goes, because it doesn't, doesn't affect that. I mean, this is just going to affect somebody's balance sheet inside the country, which has not anything to do with how much stuff you are sending out of the country. Um, see, what is it? 
Now those are pollutants. And you don't need the equipment. Um, let's see. Well, let's see. First of all, this is not exports. So if you have the standard, you don't, you don't even have to think about this. But also, the other thing that makes this D is sort of double irrelevant, if you will. It's irrelevant already because it has nothing to do with the amount of stuff that we're going to export. Because you're, you're thinking about costs, but you're still thinking about internal costs, like of doing stuff domestically inside the country. Like you're, you're not you're not thinking about exporting stuff. But also, there's this. I mean, this is this is another irrelevant because. The, I mean, this country is calling for reductions. I mean, they might be fine by the standards of, of the world, but their government is saying, you know what, we need to be better than that. So they're calling for reductions that are going to be way below international standards. But they're still doing it. You know, California emissions are a lot cleaner than, like, the regulations for cars in other countries, it's kind of like that. So, um, what is it? So let's see, money price increase. Yeah, but all right, that, that, that's a thought. Um, what if you can undermine the intermediate conclusion? You, if you could do that. But these are stated as facts. I mean, as far as deciding whether it's worth it to do that, because you're not going to argue against facts. So this is a good point. It deserves a slide. Let's give it a slide. In other words, there's a lot of words here. Um, what, and let me make sure that I understand. The, I think I understand the question. Let me just make sure that I understand it. So the argument is something like A, therefore, B, therefore, C. Then it seems like you're asking, why not go after this? Is that, is that basically what you're saying? OK. Um, so here's the thing. What you should do is, if you're thinking about stuff like this, if you're thinking about this, then first of all, examine the argument carefully with an eye to facts versus claims. And if anything is presented as a fact, it's not going to be argued against because of that. Again, this is the only place where this diverges from real life because in real life, I mean, that's a very common type of counter argument. Actually, no, you're wrong about that, dude. But that doesn't happen here. So just see where they transition from stating facts to making claims about stuff. So if you look at this, um, how much of this is fact? Well, this is a fact. Like they they call for huge reductions, and this is also stated as a fact. If you want to follow the law, that it will. Like if this is this is a fact, and then let's see what is it? Um, it says only some of the companies. But see, this is also stated as another fact. So the way they wrote this, these are facts. I mean, you don't have to know economics. You just have to know how people talk when they are predicting things versus when things are bad. You know, like as soon as you stick stuff like this in front of something, this word clearly, then everything after that is claims. Everything after that is suspect. And you can, then you can start arguing against it. You know, because if you stick clearly in front of anything, just try that, right? Ron is 40 years old, period. In fact, clearly, Ron is 40 years old. That means someone's looking at my picture and guessing. Or like looking at, you know, I'm talking to people I went to high school with or something like that. So, in this case, you're not going to argue against these guys. Because, because they are facts. 
But if there are claim, therefore other claim, therefore other claim, then sure, any, any step of that ladder could theoretically be the weak step. So, yeah. Um, yeah, good, I mean, don't just memorize that. Just think about how people talk. Like, think about when you put words like must be or clearly or obviously or has to or you don't put that thing in front of that. You just, facts are just facts. You know, and again, just think about those kind of statements side by side. You know, this person is over six feet tall versus this person must be over six feet tall. I mean, one of those is guessing from evidence and one of those is I know how tall they are. You know, you know which one is which. So it's just, it's more of the personalized human conversation than you'll know right away. As always, conversation is your friend. Okay. Um, as far as, as his last question, um, let me address this. So let me give you a stupid analogy because you know I like this. All right, here. Do you still read Choices Beanie? So uh, again, let me, let me, phrase what I understand to be the question here. Um, what I understand to be the question here is if I see something that matches my prediction, should I bother going through the other choices? Okay. So this is a self-awareness thing. I mean, if you, if the answer choices tend to send you down paths you shouldn't be on, then don't. Don't do it. As soon as you see a prediction, just move on. Also, if you're behind on time, that goes without saying, you can make up time. On the other hand, if you tend to be stubborn, then sure, go ahead. But even by stubborn is, you know, once you get, once you know what your standard is, if you're like, that's the standard, it's pretty standard. Like if you know here I have to be looking at something that is an outside source of exports, like if I have that in my mind is that it, and that is an absolutely stubborn thing, then I should just quickly bang, 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 just look at it. And it, it's, there it is. So, what I'm trying to tell you is that these these are basically opposites, these two, this and this. And that's where it becomes a self-awareness task. I mean, you have to know yourself. You have to know where you are on this scale and then act accordingly. So, and I mean, neither one of these is like the right way to think. Like, if you have a prediction that is, actually the way they argue it, then of course being stubborn is better. But if there are multiple ways to weaken something and you come up with one and they do something else, then then the person who is more influenced might actually wind up in a better place. So just, just know where you are on that scale and act accordingly. Um, as far as claims and facts, facts are facts. Facts are data, data or direct observations. So, I mean, there's no formula for that, but you'll know, right? I mean, facts, facts are facts, data, or direct observations, really all they are. For example, to side by side here, this man is screaming obscenities at himself on the street corner. That's a fact, I mean, you can you can see that happening. This man is insane, not a fact, no matter how much you think it is obvious, because it's it's not data. It's not an observation. It's still something that you have to get by a path of logic or it's, it's a judgment, that sort of thing. Um, think about the sort of thing, if you know how trials work in U.S. courtrooms, I mean, facts are things that could be evident. And that should really, I mean, if you're still confused on the difference, because you probably, I mean, this should be really clear. Like, this could be evidence of something, right? If, you, if a court wanted to establish 
that some person was psychologically out of their mind or something. Like this could be admitted as evidence. I mean, you could say that in a courtroom as a piece of evidence. This, of course, you could not because it's not evidence. So there, fact, not fact. It's that kind of difference. You, you'll you'll know when you see it. All right, let's let's look at one more of these. What in the world? I didn't really do that. Okay, one more. Let's do this one. Right there. This time you get all the choices. I don't know what to make of, of that. That's in the chat box. I mean, some some premises will be factual. Others might be claims. I mean, some of them have to be facts. You can't have an argument that's based on nothing but claims. But you, you'll you know it. You'll know what you see. If you make a conversation out of it, then you'll know when someone goes from stating facts to guessing things. Try to answer this in the next 30 seconds. Okay, let's start talking about this. First thing right off the top is that you do not care about the boldface statement at all. I, ironic that it's in boldface, but because notice what, what this means, right? Serve the same function means you can take out the boldface and then you can put in a new thing. So basically you are treating this as though the, as though the boldface were not even there. It, it's just, you can put a blank there if you want. So there's a blank there, but there's a bunch of purple crap. So smiley face, if that makes sense, that even though that's in bold face, it's like the one thing here that is just totally not even a thing. Okay. Um, so let, let's look at this. I mean, and by the way, you should you should experiment with reading the words in different kinds of orders. Um, Try it. Like if you read it something from top to bottom, then when you review the problem, try reading it from bottom to top and see if the experience is different. Because like it, it's it's not going to be one way all the time. That's the best way. Like in this problem right here, for instance, that we did. I mean, if you read this first and then you go up there and read that, then then you'll get through it more efficiently. But here. If you read this, such water will be useless in improving physical performance. Okay, like let's say we read that first. So at least we know what what side of an issue we're on, right? Matt, you know, we're always arguing against Matt. Matt's trying to sell this product, and I don't think Matt's product's going to work. Okay, but now we, I mean, what is the product and how does it work? So that's where we start reading from the top here. So, okay, the amount of oxygen that your muscles can absorb is one thing that, that is, it is a limiting factor. This is a fact. So you can't say that that's not a limiting factor. So, and limiting factor, think about what that means, right? Like, it means that it's a limiting factor, which means if you could improve it, then you would definitely improve your performance. So if oxygen O2, oxygen states, is a limiting factor, what this means that if you can get more oxygen into the muscles, then performance will improve not might. 
because that's the very definition of what a limiting factor means. It means that that is the thing that, that is putting a ceiling on your performance. So, okay. So you can't you can't argue against that. That's, that's what limiting factor means. So Matt Matt is trying to sell a bottle of water with oxygen in it. If he thinks that's going to do it. So Matt sells water with extra oxygen. And the claim, the advertisement, is that it's going to do that. The people selling this stuff, the salespeople, say that the water will do this. Aha. So now we have a standard. Because you want to argue against this. You can't argue against the brown stuff. The brown stuff is factual. Well, not that, but this is let me maybe color code that different different color. Make that red. Okay, the brown stuff is factual. You cannot argue against the brown stuff. So you gotta argue about the green stuff. Okay. The water, no, it won't is what you have to say. And notice this is before you look at the choices. You definitely don't want to look at the answer choices until you have a standard. So you say, nope, no, it won't. So in other words, you say, in other words, more specifically what you are saying is that oxygen extra oxygen in the water will not do what? What's the second line of that? Extra oxygen in the water will not, will not what? More directly though. I mean that's ultimately where you're going with it, but it won't be absorbed by the muscles. Yeah, because everything, if it gets into the muscles, there are there are no more bottlenecks. I mean, it will, it will improve performance. So the, the crux of this whole thing is that the extra oxygen will not get into the muscles for whatever reason. So you need a reason why it's not going to do that. There you go. This is your standard. Is this a reason? So this is your standard for each answer choice. You should, you should have that in mind when you read the choices. Standard for each answer choice. Is this a reason why that extra oxygen won't go from the water to the muscles? That's standard. This has nothing to do with that. Not a thing. This, does this have anything to do with transporting oxygen from water to muscles? No, it doesn't. I mean, this says that your oxygen capacity might go up, but as far as how your body takes in the oxygen, this doesn't help us understand that. I mean, your performance would get better, theoretically, if you could get more of it in your muscles, but this doesn't weigh in either way of how that works. It's a moving target, in other words, but it doesn't tell you whether you're going to hit it. This. Notice this word. This is a word that means things. What does that mean? The only way to get oxygen into there is through the blood. What should you take from that? It is a fact. Yeah, because like these answer choices are they're going to be facts. I mean, four of them will be facts that are either irrelevant or go the wrong way. But 
one of them. I mean, so yeah, they will be factual. Like, they're not going to give you random claims. But only, only means what about other ways? Yeah, it eliminates every single other option. I like the way you wrote that. You put that on the board. Um, yeah, only is a big word. I mean, only makes the choice very strong, which could be good or bad. Here it's a good thing because it eliminates every other option. And, you know, you don't drink water in your lungs. I mean, if you do, that's called drowning. So if the lungs are the only way to get it, then that means it's not it, it's not going to go from the water because you do not breathe water in through your lungs unless you're drowning. So this is the answer we want. If we look at the other ones, I mean, D just says that there are other factors. Okay, great. I mean, I'm sure there are. I mean, there are lots of other factors. This is just common sense. But if you can improve that, you can still improve that. I mean, if there are other factors, great. We're not worried about that. This is, this is not a thing. And then E. Remember, water loss, so dehydration is not the point here. The point is oxygen, not water. So this is outside of the boundaries of what we care about. So we have white, white, black, white, white, irrelevant, irrelevant, right answer, irrelevant, irrelevant. There you go. But notice, again, the work is up front. And no matter how you do it, no matter what order you read stuff in, the work in critical reasoning should definitely be up front. I mean, you should have a standard, no matter what kind of critical reasoning probably you're doing. You should have some sort of standard by which to judge the answer choices before you start judging them. Because the way, otherwise, it's way too easy for the choices to start singing a song and you listen to it, even if you thought you weren't going to. But, so at least if you take anything from today, it should be an open-mindedness to reading things in different orders from what you might be used to. So again, like when you review these things, always try to do something you didn't do when you did the problem the first time. In fact, that's pretty much the golden rule of, of reviewing things, is do something new the only thing that would destroy the purpose of review would be if you went back and did exactly the same thing you did the first time. Because that, that doesn't really add value. So yeah, I wouldn't call it an opinion. It's not really an opinion. Um, I, you have the right idea in, in your head, although the word opinion is generally used to mean things that do not have logic behind them. So as a, an opinion is just like, I feel this way emotionally. So wrong word, but you have the right idea. That, that, is, that is, you should have a prediction. Um, should you always? No, nah, not in most cases. In most, most bold face problems are what is the role played by these statements. And if you have that, then of course you can't cross those out. But... I mean, yeah, in the vast majority of bold-based questions, you, you need the bold faces because the vast majority of them are like, what is the role played by these? But just, again, this is not something that you would want to try to memorize. You just want to read the words and just do what they say. So if you need something that serves the same function, then it means that that's gone. Just like if you miss a day at work, and you want to know who serves the same function as you, that means you have to think about how the office runs with everybody except you. And then imagine putting someone in this place. So, all right, that brings us to closing time. Um, thank you. The next study hall is, I think it's in two weeks, maybe it's in 24. Um, check the, uh, check the, the website for updates on that, but I do believe that it is the 24th. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you very much. Let's kill the recording. And yeah, the times are going to be, there, there might be some bouncing around of the times. That might be a thing that happens.
Uh, I think the next few are going to be back at the old time. It was like 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Although there's, they, you just you just gotta check it for updates. If it jumps around at night. All right, recording is good.